Guys, the day is finally here. It is July 1st, 2024, and the National Registry has officially changed their exam. And if you haven't checked it out, on the description, I'm going to have the link to the National Registry's website, and you can see all the changes. They actually did a pretty good job adding some new features on their website, some videos to watch, some examples. And in this video, I'm going to break down pretty much all the significant changes that you as a student or somebody that's looking to take your National Registry exam needs to know. Okay, so first thing I got to say is what if you've taken your cognitive exam or your written exam, you know, the one at Pearson View, and you didn't do the psychomotor exam and you wanted to be nationally certified? Unfortunately, you're going to have to retest all over again. Okay. You're going to have to do that cognitive exam again because you know what? The psychomotor exam is gone. Okay. It's been added to the actual cognitive exam. And what do I think about that? I think it's a good thing. Now, I am somebody who does proctor the National Registry practical exam. I don't think it's a terrible test, but I don't think it does what we want it to do. Me personally, I think that the student should do all these skills and practice all of these skills in school. Okay. Once they get signed off in class and they actually perform all the scenarios, they should be able to just take an exam and move on. If you're in school right now, these are going to be the changes that you are going to see on the national. First thing, and probably the most important, right, is how much is this thing going to cost me if I need to take it? For those of you who are getting your advanced EMT, 159 is the new price. For those of you going to medic, uh, the new price is 175. Okay, for those of you who are doing your advanced EMT, this is the new breakdown of the actual test. Okay, so they're doing, if you see, well, look how big clinical judgment is now. Okay, clinical judgment, by the way, was never a part of the National Registry before it was EMS ops, med, medical, trauma, cardiac, and airway. Um, so yeah, they really changed some of the dynamic of this test. Let's take a look at medic. Crazy to see that. Uh, it states here, it says, items related to pediatric patient care will be integrated throughout the exam, and 30% of cardiology resuscitation domain is allotted to graphical items such as EKG rhythms. I like it. Even though, let's take a look at cardiac. Cardiac's only up to 14% of the tests, and they're saying 30% of those questions could have EKGs. But again, clinical judgment, man, a lot. now. Stick around in this video because I am going to explain what the clinical judgment is and I'm going to give you some breakdowns or some examples of different type of quest test questions that you might see. So take a look at this. They state that the National Registry introduced several new types into the exam. These item types often refer to as technology enhanced items or TEIs, right? So here's some examples of TEIs. We got build list which it states candidates must position several presented options into the order specified. So it's kind of like a drag and drop, but you're putting it into like a specific order to see that it, um, I'm going to do this first, then I'm going to do this next. So that's more of like a build list. Next one's a drag and drop, which is, we've seen these in past exams, not in the national registry, but it's where you would say, which item on this side uh, matches with the items on this side, right? And you get to drag and drop. The last one, it says option and checkbox. Candidates must classify, categorize, or identify several options presented in a table base um, on certain specified criteria. I'll show you an example of a scenario in a couple minutes. So clinical judgment, they're really trying to tackle um, how you perform on a call, right? So of course, in route, on scene, post scene, are all different types of things that we as providers need to consider when now when testing, right? So we say, okay, um, while I'm in route, how what am I? What is my concerns, right? Maybe dispatch information, scene safety. Am I wearing appropriate PPE given the dispatch information, right? Maybe some 
uh, what are some possibilities uh, as to what we might encounter given the dispatch information, right? So I'd be very interested to see how they're gonna word some of these questions. Uh, and then obviously posting, what are you gonna do after? Um, I could see them maybe getting into a little bit of ops stuff there, maybe like decon and also uh, going to a post incident action plan, talking about it, maybe critical incident stress management, things of that sort there. So take a look at this. This one's interesting. It, sta it states candidates have three and a half hours to complete the paramedic exam. Obviously, there's still going to be a Pearson view centers a uh, candidate will be required to answer a minimum of 110 items i don't know if you know it was 80 and of course there's still the 20 pilot questions right so before july 1st it was a minimum of 80 questions with 20 pilots so you only had to necessarily like technically answer uh, 60 questions, but you didn't know which pilot, which items were being piloted. Uh, now you have to do a minimum of 110. So this test got significantly longer. Okay. Uh, still a maximum though of 150. So here's a, a couple examples. This is considered a graphical item. By the way, I got these all from the National Registry's website. Again, I'm putting it in the link in the description below. Uh, so if you want to go take a look, I recommend it. They even give you some sample type questions that you can answer. So not a bad idea to take a look at their website. So this one just shows a EKG rhythm of VFib and it asks, what are the three things that you want to initiate when you see this rhythm? All right. CPR, defibrillation, use a BVM, things of that sort. Here's another question. Uh, and you can see here, we have this in route, on scene and post scene that uh, these are like a scenario based type question. And it's showing in route and it gives a lot of information. And then it asks you, what are you gonna do in route? So pretty straightforward. And then obviously you would have to click on the scene and it, it'll change and give you more information of, hey, this is what I see on scene. Now, from my understanding, you're allowed to move back and forth on the call, on any of these scenario type calls, because I know the National Registry was always classic to not allow you to move back and forth in their exams. But my understanding from students that have piloted these questions, and I'm going to also take this National Registry test to, pr to see what it's like, but they say that you can move back and forth on the scenarios. Here's another example. Here's a drag and drop. So it's showing uh, first line, second line, and not indicated. And there's a bunch of, well, it's not all medications. A couple of medications are on there. It says continue EKG monitoring. So basically, what would you do first, second, and then what would you not do for this patient? So it's still like a scenario. And, it, and if you see up here at the top, it says that it's on scene. So this is interesting, right? How, how are you going to answer these questions de depending on if you're at the scene or you're not at the scene? Um, will will definitely change. Here's a build list type question. It says order of conditions from most likely, which should be number one, to least likely. Okay. So it's saying which one is most appropriate to least appropriate. Because I'm one thing I'm curious about is how long can these lists be? Are they always four options? And if one of them are out of order, does that make the entire question wrong? Uh, I would say yes. But there's another thing that happens in the National Registry. I know I mentioned they do Bloom scores, but they also have HUT scores and raw scores, right? So a cut score might, your cut score might not be as good as your raw score. Like your raw score is like, hey, these are the amount of questions that this person actually got wrong. But your cut score does take into account questions that have multiple good answers. And they give like different values for different answers that are on the exam. And the National Registry is known to use cut scores, which is great. I think it saves a lot of people. 
but yeah, I'm very interested to, to dive a little bit more. And if you do know more additional information on how these are actually being graded, let me know. Because yeah, this is pretty interesting stuff. And the last item that I got on here is an option box item. Okay, so it's showing you, it says, consider how blood glucose levels are affected by the pancreatic hormones, insulin and glucagon. What are the actions of insulin and glucagon and what are their sources? Select the collect answers in the table below. Okay, so it's giving um, like source alpha cells and source beta cells and they're saying, is this glucagon or is it insulin? And you can pick on either side. It's not just multiple choice anymore. What do I think um, about this? I, I think it's I think it's moving in the right direction, right? I think the National Registry is does a decent job. One thing that is challenging, though, as an educator, as somebody who is involved in teaching EMS, is where do I find all the information that the National Registry is utilizing, right? Just know this as a student. The National Registry does not work off of a textbook, right? You can't pick up the newest Nancy Caroline, uh, what is this, the ninth edition? Ninth edition and say, man, this thing's got everything that the National Registry is going to have, right? They might utilize um, some stuff by the NA and AMT, like PHTLS, or they might utilize uh, American Heart Association stuff, but um, there might be some information inside the Brady textbook that's not inside these books that could be beneficial, right? So they get, they have a standard and they pick up information uh, from a bunch of different sources to create their exams. If you're planning on taking this test and you're nervous and you're looking for some guidance, check out this channel. I have so much information to dive into about each one of these categories, right? To help you understand this information. And if you have any specific questions, let me know. If you want me to make any future videos on something specific, let me know. And I'm gonna be pushing out videos more and more frequently, uh, especially with these new updated changes that are out. Gotta get after this, all right? I wish you all the best of luck for those of you who are taking it. Um, if you did take it today, let me know in the comments how it went. Take care, everybody, and good luck.